Welcome to Collocation, a Community College's weekly news program. I'm Ali Jeter. And I'm Leah Fronte. And here's your news now. And here are your top stories from around the block. Last week, the Cabrini community gathered at Citizens Bank Park for Cabrini Night at the Phillies, an annual tradition that welcomes freshman students to Cabrini and serves as a celebration of the new fall semester. Let's check in with Jimmy for some of the highlights from that night. On Friday, September 16th, Cabrini College celebrated the sixth year of Cabrini Night at the Phillies. The night started out with the chorus singing the national anthem. This year, clear skies and 60 degree weather greeted attendees to the home game against the St. Louis Cardinals. The Cabrini dance team took to the field at the top of the sixth inning. Cabrini students, their families, faculty members, and alumni all came together to enjoy the game. I enjoy Cabrini Night at the Phillies because you get to see people that you haven't maybe talked to in a little bit of time, and you get to see all the professors and have a great night at the Phillies game with all the food and the fun and the dancing. It's great. It's a lot of fun. You get to go to the game with your friends. And um, this year I was actually able to join the chorus. I stand with them. That was a nice experience. And it's always nice to meet with everyone from Cabrini and enjoy, uh, enjoy a sporting event. It's wonderful to have so many Cabrini people all in one place. Um, mm -hmm. All their families and all the excitement. And the choir did wonderfully. Uh -huh. The cheerleaders, the dance team. It was, it was a great day. So we just wanted to pull it off tonight. Sorry to say, but it wasn't in the cards for the Phillies. They lost 42 in the 11th inning. But they went on to win their fifth straight National League East title the following night, winning that game 9-2. I'm Jimmy Crow on location at Citizens Bank Park. Now back to Allie and Lee at the news desk. Cabrini's Dixon House, known to many students as House 2, has been shut down due to mold. Our own Daniel Alia was there as the house was being evacuated. I'm Danielle Alio on location inside of House 2, where we just received word that students are being evacuated due to a mold growth in the residence hall. The students were told to pack up their things and get ready to leave, and they're being placed in different residence halls around campus. A lot of mixed emotions, so location's trying to figure out how everyone's feeling. I've been here since the summertime, like all summer, and there's been mold since the summer, and then I came in here and there was mold on the carpet and the furniture. We called facilities multiple times to come clean it up, and they have, but it's come back like the very next day. As you can see, mold like this has been found throughout the house, especially on the first floor. If you touch the wall, it's actually wet, which makes a great breeding ground for mold. Two nights ago, I reported that there was mold in my room because I couldn't breathe because I have asthma. And um, last night we had a meeting about it, and my buddy actually messed with me and said that I was getting kicked out kicked out of the room and I had to come back. But uh, I had all my things packed last night and ready to go. I actually slept in West because once I found out that there was mold in there, I don't want to stay in there anymore. Uh, I don't know how I feel about it just because like, you know, this is like the upperclassmen side. And then the like, you know, underclassmen are here now. And it's kind of weird. But I mean, the kid that moves, that's moving in with me, like I know him from last year, so it's all right. So I guess I'm... It could have been worse. It's a little intimidating to move into an upperclassman dorm because, like, we have roommates and we don't know them and they might not like us. But she's real nice, so we got lucky. After the students move out, House 2 will remain vacant until all of the mold is cleared, which is unclear when that will happen. For location, I'm Danielle Alio. Members of the Church of the Latter day Saints, known as Mormons, broke ground on a new temple in Center City, Philadelphia. Full-scale operations will begin in the spring of 2012 and will be completed by 2014. This will be the first Mormon temple in Pennsylvania. A hazmat situation in Bucks County caught crews off guard as they battled a chemical spill earlier this week. The incident was reported at 
at the GTS Chemical Company in the Falls Township. The cause for the alarm? A fire broke out as a result of an explosion. No injuries have been reported. Gennardi's founder, Charles Gennardi, died this past week of kidney failure at the age of 102. Born in Norristown, he and his five brothers founded the local supermarket in 1954 by expanding their father's corner store. Gennardi operated 33 stores throughout Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware, but later sold the company to Safeway, Inc. And those were your top local news stories. Now here is Leah with Across the Nation. Thanks, Allie. President Obama proposed a buffet tax on people making more than a million dollars annually as part of his deficit reduction plan. The proposal anticipates raising $3 trillion in deficit savings over the next 10 years. This proposal comes only a week after the American Jobs Act that calls for more than $500 billion in federal stimulus spending. Republicans in the House have said they will not agree on any tax hikes. This past weekend, 10 people were killed at the Reno Air Show after pilot Jimmy Leeward lost control of his P-51 Mustang crashing into the tarmacs. Lee Word, a veteran pilot, revealed on YouTube the plane underwent major modifications in order to make it go faster without replacing the engine. Photo evidence shows his seat in the cockpit may have become dislodged, resulting in the crash. This week, the Pentagon plans to formally repeal in the ban on gays in uniform, known as Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Since late 1993, the military has discharged more than 13,000 troops for violating the ban since many considered it necessary to avoid potentially fatal battlefield distractions. Many that have been discharged are eager to get back in uniform and will re-enlist. The Defense Department says it will have zero tolerance for anti-gay behavior, as it does for religious, racial, and gender discrimination. California investigators unearthed the remains of missing California nursing student Michelle Lee in Alameda County near San Francisco. Lee went missing on May 27th after never returning from break during the shift at work. Police have stated the case as a homicide and the investigation is ongoing. And those were your top stories from across the nation. And now let's take a trip around the world. The United Nations is set to meet this week in New York City as Palestinian President Mohammed Abbas readies his concessions for a Palestinian state recognized by the UN. Some support the notion, but Israel requests heads of state to oppose the bid. Abbas has stated he is willing to negotiate with Israel, but only if 1,967 borders are recognized. President Obama has urged Abbas to drop the statehood bid in a conference Wednesday. The International Monetary Fund has warned a one in six chance of a double dip recession in the UK. The IMF stated in its World Economic Outlook report, the world economy has weakened significantly. If the UK's gross domestic product shrinks below two thirds, it will re-enter a recession. The former Afghan president has been killed in a suicide attack earlier this week after an extremist hit an explosive in his turban. The Afghan president cut his visit short in the US over the attacks which dealt a cruel blow to the peace efforts in the Middle East. And that was your trip around the world. Now let's go to Jimmy for his tech connection. Hey everyone, here's your weekly dose of tech news. NASA scientists confirmed late last week that one of their own satellites will fall to Earth this weekend. The bus-sized Upper Atmosphere Research Satellite has a 1 in 3200 chance of hurting someone when it plunges to Earth sometime around September 23rd. Due to the large area in which the fragments may land, NASA officials are informing countries around the world to not to go near any potential debris and to contact local law enforcement for assistance. The Apple rumor mill has been at full steam now, now that Apple has gone nearly three months without officially announcing a new phone, but that may soon change. The New York Times reports that the announcement of a new model iPhone is just weeks away, according to an Apple employee who asked not to be named. A four-inch touchscreen and a fast dual-core processor chip may be coming into the next incarnation of the iPhone, but only time will tell if these are real, unreleased features of a new device, or just utter rumors floating around the web. A long-held and often cursed staple of tech culture is in for an update. Microsoft previewed Windows 8 to developers recently, and along with the expected new features, there appears to be a new blue screen of death to greet those who have experienced a system-wide crash. Instead of spewing out a list of obscure error codes that often bewilder less tech-oriented people among us, a very prominent sad emoticon is shown with a simply worded explanation of the error. Microsoft said it was trying to get in tune with a more younger crowd when it designed the new screen. That's all I have this week. I will be sure to stay plugged into the latest tech news. Back to Lee and Allie. 
Thanks, Jimmy. Now we have Danielle for this week's Tips of the Week. Thanks, Leah. Here are two quick tips that seem like they won't help you save much money, but in the long run, it all adds up. Instead of buying that three to four dollar cup of coffee every morning, brew your own before you head off to class. There are so many affordable coffee makers out there on the market that it is very easy to pick out the one you like, and trust me, it is a great investment. I recently purchased a Frappuccino maker, and it has paid for itself at least 50 times over. Plus, I can make any flavor I want, including some of the popular seasonal flavors, such as pumpkin and mint chocolate chip. Another money-saving tip that you may not think of is purchasing a stainless steel thermos and water filter pitcher that can save you from constantly buying water bottles or sugary drinks between classes. Not only will this save you money, but it will also save you from the amount of calories in soda. And those are your tips of the week. Back to you, Leah and Allie. Thanks, Danielle. And now, let's take a look back in history. On September 21, 1780, American General Benedict Arnold commits treason after meeting with British Major John Andre to talk about handling over West Point to the British. In return, he would receive a large amount of money and a high rank in the British Army. Although the plot was foiled, the name has become synonymous with the word traitor. On September 22, 1862, Lincoln delivers the Emancipation Proclamation that set the date for freedom for more than three million slaves in the United States. With the proclamation, it recasts the Civil War as a fight against slavery in the U.S. And now as you look back in history for this week, let's get along with this week's Person of the Week. Welcome to Person of the Week. This week's guest is not only a full-time Spanish professor, but also the study abroad coordinator, Dr. Juliano. Today, we're going to just ask him a few questions about studying abroad to inform the rest of the campus community on how important it is to travel the world. When students, especially freshmen, approach you about studying abroad, what do you tell them about the program? Um, you know, many students, especially our first year students, come to Cabrini now having already had an international experience during their high school years. So a lot of first year students will come and approach me and say, I want to find out about study abroad. How do I study abroad at Cabrini? can I study abroad as a first-year student? Um, a, a couple of years ago, I started working with the College 101 advisors, and I make it a point every fall semester to go into as many College 101 classes as I can to talk to the first-year students about study abroad. One of the biggest pieces of advice I give them is it's never too early to start thinking about studying abroad. How do you think traveling the globe can change their lives? Oh, I think it can change them in so many ways. First of all, there's no way to learn uh, a, the culture of another people better than actually experiencing it by living there yourself and uh, getting to know the people of another country. Um, it also, students tell me that it makes them much more independent. When students come to Cabrini College, they think coming to our campus is uh, a big step in their, in their uh, quest for independence, let's say. But if you think about it, when you come to Cabrini, most of our students live close enough that they can travel home on the weekends if they want to. Um, a lot of our students even bring their laundry home for their moms and dads to take care of for them. If they need additional money, they just ask mom and dad while they're home on the weekend. They have a lot of their friends from their high school years and so on and so forth and the friends they've made at Cabrini. When you're in another country, suppose you're in Australia and you are 25 air hours away from home, you can't be running home whenever you want to. Mm -hmm. You can't even be calling home every time you want to because, of course, it's, it's quite expensive. So you quickly learn to become more independent and self-sufficient. Suppose you're living in Italy and, you're, and Italian is not your first language. Not only will you be living in a country far away from home, but you'll be dealing with people who don't speak English. So you quickly learn to adapt, to change, to grow, to appreciate other things. I just think it's an all-around win-win situation for whoever chooses to study abroad. How important do you think it is for students to take in the experience and travel the world? Extremely, especially in the times in which we are living. In, in this area, in this um, era of globalization, you're even going to be competing for jobs with people from different countries and who have different kinds of expertise. Uh, more, most of our companies are global. The more kinds of international experiences you can offer them, I just think the better off you are. And um, not everybody can afford to or wants to go away for an entire semester. And because we try to tailor programs to all different kinds of students, you can really choose something from a, week and a week's length to a whole year if you wanted something like that. There are all kinds of programs. 
I think the short-term study abroad courses are an excellent opportunity for students who might not otherwise get to go abroad to do so. They're also an, ex uh, an excellent opportunity for students who are not sure whether they want to go away for a longer period of time to kind of get their feet wet and see if this is the thing for them or not. not. For instance, this coming spring we have uh, study abroad courses that are going to take place in Guatemala, in Ireland, and in England. Now suppose a person really wanted to go to England but doesn't have the funding or doesn't have the time to go abroad for an entire semester. They can get the experience of at least having been there, at least having said I studied in London. Even though it might be for a short eight to ten days, it's still an international experience. And the nice thing now is you mentioned that they take that the international travel takes part over place over spring break. Sometimes people are going at the end of the semester only because the weather seems to be nicer then and you can enjoy the outdoor part of the experience as well. Um, two years ago I took students on a short-term course to Spain and we went in May and could not have had more perfect or more beautiful weather. Um, I just th Another thing is that the amount that these short-term trips cost is more manageable for our students. You know, a student who comes in here and says, I want to do a, a semester at sea, is looking at spending about $25,000 for a semester. Yes, it's a wonderful experience, and yes, you do get to see a lot of places in the world, but a person who comes in here and says, I don't have $25,000, but I really want to go out of this country, I've never been out of the United States, can look at a short-term course for about $2,000 or $2,500, which if you save, work hard and save, mostly everybody can manage. I want to thank Dr. Juliano and also mention if you're interested in studying abroad, email him at nu722 at cabrini.edu or visit him in Founders Hall, the third floor, room 367. Thanks, Lauren. And now it's time for Cabrini Sports Talk with Mary-Kate. A huge win by the Cabrini men's soccer team took place this past Saturday against rivals Eastern University. The pack stands rage as senior Eric Collins took the, put the ball in the back of the net, creating a 2-1 defeat against the Eagles. The Cabrini women's field hockey team won their first CSAC game against Newman 6-2. Senior Maura Gordon was named CSAC Player of the Week by the conference. Gordon led the Cavaliers to two wins last week with four goals and two assists. The women's and men's cross-country team displayed a remarkable performance at the Duke's Invitational in Vineland, New Jersey. The Lady Cats finished fourth and the men finished fifth. In professional sports news, Eagles quarterback Michael Vick suffered a concussion late in the third quarter of Sunday night's game in Atlanta, but they did take home the win, 35-31. to Hopefully Vic will be back to play the Giants 1 p.m. this Sunday at Lincoln Financial Field for the first time this season. Thanks, Mary-Kate. Now on to Melissa Webb for your entertainment news. Hey, guys. I am Melissa Webb with your entertainment news. Last weekend, The Lion King and 3D hit box offices and ended with a $30 million three-day gross. This allowed the movie to be at the number one spot. Was Charlie Sheen being a kiss-up? This past Sunday night at the Emmys, he presented the award for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Comedy Series. Before he announced the winner, he had to get something off his chest to the cast from Two and a Half Men. From the bottom of my heart, I wish you nothing but the best for this upcoming season. We spent eight wonderful years together, and I know you will continue to make great television. Now on to the Emmy, he said. Well, let's check out some exciting pictures from the event. Do we tune in to the Emmys to check out who achieved an award for their hard work, or do we check out their fabulous outfits? Sofia Vergara arrived wearing a gown by Vera Wang, making a statement with her bold dangling earrings. Leah Michelle's red gown was designed by Marquesa, and Carrie Washington and Nina Dobrev also arrived on a red carpet wearing red. Others decided to arrive on a red carpet by taking a risk and showing a little skin, such as Gwyneth Paltrow wearing a gown by Emilio Pucci. And the host of the event, Jane Lynch, dazzled them all by wearing four different creations by David Meister. Some of the winners were Kate Winslet, who won Outstanding Lead Actress, and Gay Pierce, who won Outstanding Supporting Actor in a miniseries or a movie for Mildred Pierce. Kyle Chandler won Outstanding Lead Actor in a Drama Series for Friday Night Lights. 
and Melissa McCarthy won Outstanding Lead Actress in a Comedy Series for Mike and Molly. The biggest winners of the night was Modern Family, which won Outstanding Comedy for the second year in a row. That's all I have for you this time. Be sure to tune in next time. I am Melissa Wett, and you've just been entertained. And that's all we have for this week's location. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast on iTunes so you can keep up to date on all the latest Cabrini and important news from around the country. I'm Leah Fronte. And I'm Allie Jeter. Have a great week, Cabrini. Thank you.